Good evening, everyone. We begin the readout tonight with a giant step backwards for women as free people in America. 50 years ago, progress was made when the Supreme Court announced their decision in Roe v. Wade. Major story today, aside from the death of Lyndon Johnson, the tragic death and the hopes for peace in Vietnam, is the decision of the United States Supreme Court. It handed down a historic decision about abortion. The court said in a 7-2 decision that in the first three months of pregnancy, only the woman and her physician may decide whether she may have an abortion. In the second three months, all the state may do is regulate abortion procedures. And only in the final three months of pregnancy can the state forbid abortion. That was an historic moment for women. Only the third official affirmation of women's rights after the right to vote in 1920 and the legalization of birth control by the Supreme Court in 1965. The 1973 ruling on abortion told women that we, not the government, control our bodies, that women get to make their own decisions about their own lives. And now that era of basic human rights and dignity for women has been ripped to shreds with the leak of a draft opinion from the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, as well as the associated ruling Casey versus Planned Parenthood. The Supreme Court has confirmed that the document obtained by Politico is, in fact, the authentic first draft. In the opinion, Justice Samuel Alito doesn't mince words. It is a blatant, almost gleeful rejection of the past 50 years. Quote, Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak and the decision has had damaging consequences. And far from bringing about a national settlement of the abortion issue, Roe and Casey have inflamed debate and deepened division, unquote. And with that, the unelected Supreme Court, shaped by minority rule, has taken away a right that a majority of Americans support. It's not the final draft, but it's very likely that the actual decision won't be any different. Alito's ruling rests on the argument that, quote, the Constitution makes no reference to abortion and no such right is implicitly protected, taking us back to the time of the founding fathers when women were considered barely more than the property of their fathers and husbands. There's no telling what other rights this fundamentalist court could decide to take away next in order to get us back to the founding fathers, from birth control to gay marriage to the many other rights that are not specifically enumerated in the Constitution. Here's how President Biden reacted to the draft decision today. It concerns me a great deal that we're going to, after 50 years, decide a woman does not have a right to choose within the limits of, case, of the Supreme Court decision in case. If the rationale of the decision as released were to be sustained, a whole range of rights are in question. A whole range of rights. And the idea we're letting the states make those decisions, localities make those decisions, would be a fundamental shift in what we've done. Any minute now, we will hear from our country's highest ranking woman, Vice President Kamala Harris. Democrats made a scathing case against the decision today, promising to pass legislation to codify Roe v. Wade into law. This is as urgent and as real as it gets. We will vote to protect a woman's right to choose, and every American is going to see which side every senator stands on. This is a five alarm fire. I am here because I am angry, and I am here because the United States Congress can change all of this. Yes, it is. I have seen the world where abortion is illegal, and we are not going back. In a statement, former President Obama and Michelle Obama said they understood that many are angry and frustrated, but they called on Americans to join with the activists who've been sounding the alarm on this issue for years and vote. Because if we want judges who will protect all, and not just some, of our rights, then we've got to elect officials committed to doing the same. We're starting to see some of that action tonight with protests across the country. But as the Obamas said, that anger will need to translate into votes in the midterms, because Democrats currently cannot pass a law protecting abortion rights in the United States Senate without ending the filibuster. And they're facing a Republican Party that's openly campaigning for a nationwide abortion ban. Women in the 13 states that have trigger laws that would immediately outlaw abortion once Roe is overturned will be most immediately affected. But make no mistake, Republicans are coming after every single American. They're just getting to the women first.
Joining me now, Congresswoman Barbara Lee of California and Alexis McGill Johnson, President and CEO of Planned Parenthood Federation of America and the Planned Parenthood Action Fund. Representative Lee, thank you so much for being here. We've had you on before to talk about your personal experience um, regarding abortion and the fact that you too remember the era, as does Senator Warren, when abortion was illegal. Um, what was your reaction to the leak of this draft and to Samuel Alito's reasoning that Roe had to go because it doesn't fit within the, the original framing of the country and the Constitution? Well, Joe, first of all, I'm really angry. Uh, and, I, and I'm trying to contain myself, quite frankly. Uh, I'm angry and I'm heartbroken. I'm, I'm heartbroken because uh, so many do not know life without Roe, first of all. Secondly, um, it's going to be low-income women, black and brown women, who are going to be impacted the most. Women with money will be able to travel to states uh, and afford to uh, have an abortion. So this is an issue of racial justice. Uh, and it, it is a reminder for me personally of the days before Roe, when at age 15, Joy, you know, um, I had a very heart-wrenching decision to make, and my mother and I made that decision together. It was nobody else's business. That's why I didn't talk about it. It was my right to privacy. It was my right not to talk about my health care issues. <laughs> and so I, my mother uh, sent me to Mexico, and I, it was a back alley where I, I had an abortion. Fortunately, I lived, but so many then black women were dying each and every day of septic abortion. So I lived... So many thousands of women did not live. And abortions have got to remain safe and legal. And so we do not want uh, to see this happen. But I have to tell you, uh, everything is political. We have to organize, we have to mobilize, and we have to make these senators now. And Republican women, the public supports a woman's right to reproductive freedom. These Republican women and everyone needs to unite and let these senators know in no uncertain terms they need to step up and pass the Women's Health Protection Act right away. And, and I'm going to warn our audience that um, we're waiting for uh, Vice President Harris to speak, so uh, I may have to jump in. And so, ladies, I apologize if I have to rudely interrupt uh, one of you um, if uh, the vice president begins speaking. But <clears throat> Alexis McGill Johnson, let me go to you. Um, there's a map. I want to put it up. It, this is the 13 states that have trigger laws. And, you know, these are the states that the moment that the official, you know, end of row comes, they're going to, their laws will kick in. And then there are 26 states that are likely to just ban abortion outright uh, if and when Roe is overturned. And I think now at the point is when. And you look at that, and, and it looks a lot, um, Alexis McGill Johnson, like the same states um, with the highest poverty rates, the same states that rejected um, the expansion of Medicaid under Obamacare, the same states that are aggressively turning back the right to vote, um, the same states um, whose laws seem the cruelest. Um, there's a woman named Takara Mallard um, who her tweet I thought was very interesting today. And she said, forced birth in a country with the highest maternal mortality rate, no paid maternity leave, no universal subsidized child care, no continued birth parent care, and frequently inaccessible mental health care. What is it going to mean um, for the various Planned Parenthood clinics um, when these states ban abortion? And these women, well, what is it going to mean for these women? I, I mean, that's what I was going to say. Is it's not about Planned Parenthood clinics. This is about all of those people who are living in those states. Um, that is a huge swath of the country that will now have to travel um, thousands of miles outside of their state uh, in order to get access to basic health care. Um, it is unconscionable. Uh, what what this draft opinion suggests that, that overturning Roe, uh, in a way, we know the same states that have the most restrictive access to abortion are also the states with the worst maternal um, health outcomes and increasingly more voting restrictions. So even the idea that these are the uh, the states um, that should uh, come that Alito would say uh, should come back and actually uh, enact federal legislation or state legislation, we're also restricting our ability to express our uh, you know our our opinion in in a democracy. Um, this is the reality that that we are facing, and um, you know, like everyone has said, we, we will not go back. Um, but it's going to take a lot of time for us to build back this constitutional right. I want to note just for our audience this statistic. It's pretty sharp. It's pretty jarring. Sixty percent of women who have had an abortion are already mothers. They already have children. In many cases, these are low-income women who cannot afford more children. Majority of abortions actually occur in the first trimester. Um, women seeking later abortions are more likely to be poor or young or have serious health complications. Um, 
Congresswoman, you know, two, well, let, let me let me actually skip to this because one of the things that the the pro forced birth um, side says is this is not about punishing women. This is about um, saving children, even though they tend to not be in favor of things like maternal health care, universal uh, preschool, or, or anything that helps children. But okay, they say that's that's their argument. Midas Touch, um, which has put out a lot of really, you know, stark videos um, to try to get people to focus on these issues in a, in a very specific way, they put out one um, that essentially describes a Handmaid's Tale in real life that could happen once enforcement begins, because it's hard to imagine enforcement won't include women. So let's take a look at that video. Listen, everything's going to be okay, right? Just let me do the talking, okay? Just never... right. Evening, ladies. License, please. Where are you headed? Uh, we were just out for a drive. Headed to the border? Oh, no, no. We were just going up to the... Uh, the hey there. The... What's your name? Grace. Are you pregnant, Grace? Step out of the vehicle. She does not have to. Yes, she does. No, 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 no. Show me your hands no, on the wheels, please. Grace, step out of the vehicle. On the wheel. Grace, Grace, it's okay. 